So if traditionally a like would potentially mean that we can reach an audience, and if Facebook changes that, what we have to do is work with the reality of modern Facebook for businesses, which is we have to pay to play, unfortunately. It is that if you want to reach out to more people, if you want to be more than just a needle in a haystack, you do have to invest in reaching an audience. And throughout the years, there's always these scare stories about people saying, Facebook is going to charge for you to use Facebook. And they were always debunked. However, for businesses, yes, you are going to need to pay to reach more of an audience. It's going to be a very hard uphill battle to get likes organically, to reach an audience organically. If you take my uh, SEO class, we there talk about S about organic SEO and paid SEO. Paid SEO clearly means that you pay to rank higher on the search engines. Organic is that you're not paying, that you're using many tactics for your page to get to be number one or on the first page or whatever. Because in general SEO, it's very easy to be number one on the first page of Google results. You take out your wallet and you pay. But then so does your competitor. And then they pay a little bit more, and now you're number two. You pay a little bit more, and now you're number one. But then a third party pays even more, and now you both are number three. So that's a never-ending race on SEO, paying for SEO. Facebook is not so bad, but you will still reach a better audience paying for it. And there are many ways that Facebook lets you do that. So the reality of it is you are going to need to pay some amount to reach an audience. But you can reach a pretty good audience even with as little as one dollar. With one dollar you're still going to reach, right now I have zero likes. With one dollar I could still reach like 500 people. Now not all 500 will actually care to, to follow and all of that, but we'll see that it's pretty sophisticated. This is then going to be an example of talking about uh, PPC, pay-per-click. We're going to be using the payment system of Facebook to reach an audience. And there's several ways to do it. I'm going to show you one of the most direct ways that I really like. And then I'll show you also the more powerful way, which is more complex, but could reach more people. So you've been noticing every time that I'm about to post something, instead it says boost post. That's what it means. Boost your post to reach more people, parentheses, by paying for it. That's what it should say. But boost post is pay to reach more people. I recommend when you to do it this way. Uh, post something normally, a regular old publish, and then when it's been published, we can go back to a previously published post, and you should still see boost post. I just noticed I don't have the ability to boost this note that I published. So I'm seeing what's the point of notes then, if I can't boost them. I have to explore that more. I don't know too much about notes. But this post that I made earlier that said, click here for this coupon or whatever, that says boost post gladly. The reason I say to do it this way is because I've seen this boost post screen be very finicky. One wrong move and I refresh my screen or I press back or forward and I lose it. I have to do it over. So while I'm trying to write my text here and add my post and my link and I do boost and I do something and I mess up, I have to do it all over. I don't want to think again about my amazing quote and add the link and add the photo again. I would rather post it and it's set. This is set there. Then I can go <coughs> and do boost. And if I make a mistake, I'm only going to lose a little bit. I'm not going to lose the whole post as if I'm in the middle of creating and boosting it at the same time. This does require a debit or credit card. I would suggest using credit cards just because they have better fraud protection, and I've never had a problem with Facebook payment systems and such, but you know, credit cards do offer better protection against fraud. And again, you can pay as little as $1 and reach a good audience. Obviously, if you pay $10, you reach more audience. $100, more audience. $1,000, more audience. And so if you decide that you're going to spend $20 a month that's pretty affordable. That's a few cups of coffee, uh, coffee isn't it? So $20 to reach 10,000 people. Now I'm not saying these numbers because that's exactly how many you'll reach, but you will reach more people 
by paying more. Twenty dollars is a good investment. Ten is good. Even one is good. One dollar. Yes. He is asking me a dollar a day. Yes, we'll see why that is in just a moment. And so um, the way I'm going to try this is I've already posted one post. I'm going to see the boost post screen. So again, you're not, you're not going to commit to anything until you click the final button to boost it. So if you don't want to do this, that's fine. If you just want to follow along, that's fine. Or if you want to try it along with me, that's fine. But I'm going to click boost post on any one of my previously existing posts. Yet this screen that could be rather complicated, but not as complicated as the other screen that I'll show. This one is a little more straightforward. Um, first of all, on the left is audience. Uh, who am I going to reach, perhaps? I've got an audience already defined. For example, I've got these other audiences. Blogger audience. Audience from PMD Interactive. I have these audiences that I've defined very similar to when I created the page and it asked me who is your target audience. Um, whatever's there, I'm going to click create new audience. I don't like that it remembers my last settings because when I teach this stuff I, it looks different for everyone. I would rather that it resets, but let me reset this like how you should see it. You're gonna see it's gonna ask for a name. Who's this audience? You can make multiple audiences and use and use them on your campaigns, but you can only use one at a time. So on create audience, it's going to say select the location, age, gender, and interests of people you want to reach. So let's say Victor's Bakery, I want to reach, I can call this thing whatever I want. I can call it customers, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to call this um, healthy living audience. Targeted to countries, states, or cities. So I could say, yeah, target it to everyone in the U.S., no problem. United States and Canada, sure. And Mexico, well, North America, why not? So I can do that, whole countries. The problem is, whatever amount of money that you set, uh, if, especially if it's a small-ish amount, less than $100, might not be reaching as many people as it could. You're trying to reach right now, the U.S., has, you know, 200 million people using Facebook. Canada has another 50 million people using Mexico, another 30 million, I don't know. So you're trying to reach too many people with too small of a budget, even $100. It still behooves you to target. It still behooves you to say, perhaps, especially because I'm a local business, I'm going to say, I'm going to target this to Chula Vista, Imperial Beach, National City, San Diego. My money is going to go toward this post to be shown to these people more often. Also ages, so I can say, again, whatever range, 30 to, uh, to 50 year olds, men or women, and then interests again. Okay, as I start filling this in here, let's say food. Do you mean food and drink, food, fast food, organic food, egg, the food, dish, the food, seafood? So again, these are things that people all day long are liking and writing about and sharing. A lot of information. There isn't the browse category like there was on the other screen, because I think this shows you even more stuff than the other screen. I don't believe there was an egg category on the original audience screen, but here there is. I'd say I'm going to select food and drink, and it's going to suggest pasta, organic farming, whiskey, rockstar drink. Okay, um, people that care about food and drink, keep people that care about desserts. I'm going to select desserts. This is my healthy living segment, so I might also say, let's see what happens with healthy. Healthy diet, healthy choice, super healthy kids, healthy recipes. <coughs> Let me see. Healthy diet. 
So I believe it, it, I think it said before I selected anything, I think it said up to 10, what was it, like 4 or 10 interests. Um, I don't want to add so many again, because I'm, if I'm trying to reach everyone, I'm not going to reach anyone. So 3, 4, 5 is a good amount, you know, 10 might be too, too much. And I'm going to say food and drink, desserts, healthy diet, save that. On this screen here on the left, I have more that I can potentially reach. Um, based on this location, these interests, and this age range. And then here it is, the budget. An estimated people reached. If I spend $20, and I let this ad run, this boosted post run for one day, it could reach between 2,200 and 5,800 people. Great, I have zero followers right now. That's a good starting point out of a potential 2,800. 2, I could go in here and say, well, actually, I want to spend $1,500. No problem. That'll reach 50,000 people. I have a question. Yes. What is, like, for instance, I, I live in the, uh, the south side, and population is mostly Hispanic, and they um, they, when they search, they search in Spanish. So, in my website is in English. How do I go about to do that? Do I need to create another website? Another website. Another Facebook page in Spanish? Or? That um, could be useful. You can create as many pages as you'd like in different languages, sharing different content, adding different budgets and different keywords. Sure, that's double the work, of course. You could use your one page and mix both the English and the Spanish into it. Sure. And then on the English uh, post version, you spend $20. And on the Spanish version, you spend $20. And then you focus on the different keywords, English and Spanish, as necessary. So that works as well. So I said, and you're thinking, I thought you said I could use as little as a dollar. You can, if you choose your own right here. It's going to recommend starting at $20, but you can always choose your own and put $1. Only 240 to 620 people. Still good. I've got zero followers. And I can't really do the same sort of thing that I have in other networks. Twitter, I really like Twitter because you can search keywords, find real people that care about a topic, and interact with them directly. I can do Google Plus uh, communities and reach people that care about a topic directly for free. Facebook, they change the rules of the playground. You have to really do this now if you're going to be serious. Pay some amount. You might say, that's really annoying, and uh, how could they do this? How could they change it so that now I have to pay? Well, you're either going to pay and play the game or not use Facebook. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. Yes. So if it gives you that day range, does that mean you're paying that per day or that they're going to need it out over those days? You mean this duration right here? Correct. If I choose seven. Yes, it's going to it's going to meet it out all of those days, and it's going to complain to me that if I chose seven days and only spent a dollar, that's going to be 14 cents. It may or may not let me do something that low for right. seven days. Um, if I do, see it is going to tell me up here. The minimum budget is $1 per day, so your budget needs at least $7. So it's going to use $1 per day. It's still going to reach a good amount of people. It's going to use $1 or so per day. Whatever hidden algorithm in the background is then going to show my post to this number of people within that time, and we'll see later how well did it work. Um, I have one day, seven day, 14 days. What if I needed six days? Well, I just set a date here. What if I needed 20 days? I set a date here. So whatever that was, a month, which is going to tell me it's too low. I'm going to need at least $47 to run it for this the rest of this month plus next month. Great, I'll put uh, $50. That's going to potentially reach up to 10,000 people. Now, the thing also that always happens with any of these ads, with any uh, account, is 
it's going to reach this number of people in their I don't even believe they really guarantee that it's going to reach at least 3,900 um, because this is not an exact science. Facebook is good at this, putting your content in front of more people, yes. But still, marketing is still an art and a science and magic. How do you convince people they saw that and they really want to click? It's still going to be up to you to post an amazing photo, a very enticing tagline, a very easy to follow link or instructions to actually have them click and buy your product. Facebook can't help you with that. It can only help put your terrible ad in front of more people's eyes, and they'll gladly take your $1,000 for it. But they're not going to help you say, that's written wrong. Look at your misspellings. That graphic isn't so good. That's still up to you as a web designer or marketer. Will it show you the metrics of conversion rate? Yes. Oh. We'll see that in a moment. So it's still up to you a lot to create a good ad, to get, create a good eye-catching thing. And yes, these are going to be ads to, to the degree that on another screen we can choose. Where do they run? Do they run in the main line? Do they run on the sidebar? Right now, it's not really telling us. It's going to run on people's regular desktop feeds, or how does it look on mobile? It looked like that without the picture. So does is my thing enticing enough to run without a picture? Maybe not. So that's still something you need to figure out. Writing something, creating something that'll catch attention and cause conversions. In fact, I haven't mentioned it in this class, a conversion is basically a goal that is reached. We have a potential customer that has not bought my cupcake yet. Once they bought my cupcake, they've been converted. It's a conversion. So what if I want people to donate to my organization? Once they've donated, that's a conversion. Before that, it's not, <coughs> not a conversion. So I could have a link here. Donate to our organization. And a, and a picture of a cute kid, you know, that's going to accept a donation. And then that link takes them to my website. Facebook really can only go so far, in a moment we'll see that it'll tell us how effective everything worked, but only really up to the point until they leave Facebook. Facebook can't tell you what happened on your own website unless you use this tracking conversion, this conversion pixel, pixel which is optional. This is complicated. I don't have time to get into it, but this is if you don't have that option again, it's not set up for you yet. It's complicated. Um, this is an option that then you can add a little bit of code that Facebook gives you on your website for Facebook to further be able to track the conversion process. Because I might have a link here to buy now. If I don't have the conversion pixel, Google, uh, Facebook will only be able to tell me up to the point the person clicks and nothing else. Did they go to my website? Did they fill out the form? Did they click buy now? Doesn't know. Unless you use the conversion pixel. I call it conversion pixel even though it doesn't say conversion pixel, but that's a common name for it. Again, I don't have time to really explain it. It's kind of complex, but guess what? Inside of their help system, it's behind my box here, in the help system they'll tell you everything about this. Go to help and look up conversion pixel, and they'll tell you exactly how you set them up how to use them, how effective they can be. Mine has a few already set up. Here's one about going to the checkout counter of this client. Here's one for that, here's one for that. So you don't have this probably because you need to set it up. It's on another screen. These should be set up first before attaching them here. They don't let us create one and then attach it at this moment. You have to set it up elsewhere. That's how Facebook can further tell you how effective has this been. People followed this link all the way to the to the put your credit card part on your website via conversion tracking. Then of course add a credit card. You can have multiple credit cards, swap them out as necessary. Um, mine has changed it. I think on yours it's going to ask you to add one if you're going to do it at this moment. Credit or debit. I think you can also attach PayPal. So, just multiple ways to pay for this. And there's, a, oh, there's a help center down there also. And then be careful, don't click boost unless you're ready to spend money. Because when you do click 
that boost, that's when it's going to start. It's going to take this humble post that at the moment is reaching a zero audience and little by little show it to potentially 240 to 620 people. Yes? If you, um, my payment option, it just says currency. It doesn't have the credit mm. card. Is that for me to like, link up before I do the payment? You might have to link it before, and I'll show that screen in a moment. So mine's already all set up, ready to go. That's why I have a few things that you guys might not, but I'll also show these other things in a moment. But this is basically the way to reach more of an audience quickly and effectively. Because we've said, let's spend my whole dollar on people that really care about my product in these places with these interests within this age range. And that's what modern marketing is finding an audience and marketing to them. Uh, McDonald's sells to people all over the world, but they really craft their message a certain way in India, a certain way in um, Russia, a certain way in Mexico, a certain way in Japan, US, even in the US, a certain way in Phoenix, a certain way in San Diego, a certain way in Florida, which is not a city. Miami. Um, so you, you want to do this. You want to craft an audience and market to them and your budget is up to you again if I resolve to spend twenty dollars a month I can create a boosted post for five dollars this week and one for five next week and so forth and then people will see that post they could like the page that's nice but better because likes have really fallen out of importance it's all about boosting and then your content here with a link can you say that again? Did you see actually, you know, you are advertising at those ways, you selecting at those sections, did you actually receive your own post ever? No, I haven't seen my own posts because we set these interests in such a way to market to a uh, specific audience. So myself, I haven't seen it on my own. I don't know if Facebook will not show it to myself because that's a waste of money or we set it so well that it's not going to reach myself. I would hope they would do that so we wouldn't waste money. <laughs> I feel they would. I feel they wouldn't. They, they wouldn't. Oh, just to see it? Yeah, just to see how it's, you know, what, what kind of people see it. Yeah, yeah. Those things. If they're even seeing it. The closest <laughs> is this, desktop or mobile. That's the closest to see what it looks like. But how does it actually look for people? I'll show that in a moment. So I'm not going to boost it, obviously, but um, that's one way to do this. Let me cancel that. So any of these posts that you've made, you can boost. Apparently not some of them. And you unfortunately cannot reboost the thing that's already been posted. That boosted, that is. If you boosted something, you can't boost it again next week. Facebook wants you to create new content. Um, also, as I said, it doesn't actually kind of check your work to see if it's good or not, except that apparently that if you post a photo and 20% of the photo is text, it won't accept it. It will warn you also, you're uploading a photo that appears to be more than 20% text, cancel or proceed. If you proceed, most likely, it's still going to cancel your post. And it's happened to, to my company once or twice, and then we got the message. They really want you to focus on a picture, maybe a very simple line of text, not a whole big line of text like we often see you know, those quotes, yeah, those okay. graphics that are just, that have a cool picture and then a quote on top of it, Facebook doesn't like that. 20%. There is actually a grid that it will show you with shaded in boxes that says it's more than 20%. But this boosting is one aspect of this. Let me show you the other more powerful one. Powerful and more confusing. If you click on your triangle at the top right, you have manage ads and create ads. This is another way to reach an audience. Have you noticed we also have, before I click that, promote. You might see it here and there. I have promote. I saw it also hidden inside of contact us. Promote your call to action. So there's other ways for you to also reach an audience. Promote your call to action. So that contact us or buy now, book now, whatever, that can be boosted as well via promote your call to action. 
Get more people to visit your website. Invite your friends. Let's say before I go up into the manage ads. Here there's quick ways to do it as well. Boost individual posts. I can click promote and promote my CTA, call to action. That'll be very similar as well. Choose, in, uh, choose what you're going to display. Add an image. What's the headline? Text. What's your audience? Ages. What's your budget and your payment? So just another way to reach an audience. So my little call to action button can also be boosted, as we're seeing there, to reach an audience. This one looks a little different. Notice I don't build the audience the same sort of way as before. So it's a little inconsistent. Click Promote, and that'll also be shown to more people. Um, if I've got 500 likes already and I do boosts, it'll reach more of those 500 that I already have in addition to going to new people. And I have zero likes, so most of, pretty much all of this is going to go to new people to try to get me likes. So likes aren't worthless, but they're not as useful as they used to be. A like used to be basically, yes, I want to see your stuff. Mark it to me. Facebook changed the rules of the game. We can either follow the new rules or not use Facebook. And really, who are we going to complain to if Facebook is not playing nice? Congress? They don't do anything. So I can also do promote your website, and that from within Facebook will show an ad of my particular website and such. I can explore that. Lastly, if I go over to the little triangle and manage ads, this is the power user one. I'm going to leave this page. Get this brand new huge Facebook ads. Check out our updated look. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. so you're going to see much more complexity here. You're going to see previous campaigns, results at a glance, how much it costs. All of that, you're going to be able to manage the ads to run them again or whatever. You're going to be able to change the account settings. Billing. This is what you'll need to do. Uh, what I would recommend, set up your billing. Instead of going to boost first, you might want to go here first and then billing. Add a credit card. Tools. This is new, they give you an image gallery. If you don't have a good picture, Facebook can suggest some pictures for you. There's the conversion pixels right there. Check out your audience insights. How effective are the people you're trying to reach? So just as an example here, you could see data like this, showing that more people that you're reaching are women, 54 to 46, in the age ranges of 25 to 34, 24 percent. Um, only 7 percent of 65 and out men. So you will be able to see all of these details. That's an, under the uh, tools um, audience insights. Exactly. That This is the whole power user screen and you'll definitely see much more. You see a lot of stuff here. So apparently the career building lifestyle is who I'm reaching and then urban tenants, relationship status. These are just examples. Um, but you'll see all this information and you'll be seeing, okay, I'm seeing that management is the keyword that is working. So I can either boost that kind of post more, 
or decide, well, this audience hasn't been tapped into very much yet. Should I spend a little bit more, $5 more, and focus my audience on these keywords to try to reach that audience? Marketing is an art and a science and a magic about reaching the right people. Knowing your information helps you make these decisions. Maybe the temporary and the seasonal is a lost cause. I've been spending money and that hasn't really increased. So, okay, I'm going to spend my money where it's a little bit more effective. Food prep and services. This is all the insights and info about the various ads that you've uh, created. And then, of course, at the top right, in big green, you've got create an ad. What's different on this way to create an ad is that then you have these other ways to reach the right audience. Get installs for your app. Reach people near your business. Get people to claim your offer. I got coupons, 10% off. That's perfect. I follow along there. These are like templates that help you, uh, that help you do this. Victor's Bakery. And you can go through the process, and it can get pretty complex. The ad sets, individual ads, so different ads can run with, within a budget. Again, this is the power users one. It's complex. But uh, there's always the help button at the top right. And this is the modern state of Facebook. Pay to play. Pay to reach an audience. It could be a dollar. It could be a thousand dollars. It is effective. Let me pull back the curtain here and look at a particular client. Over to there are limitations, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> if you go over to this particular client and their insights, let's check the likes. Let's see what's a good thing to show. Reach. So within this time period of a few months, this chart shows here the reach of people, this number of people. This page does not have 10,000 likes. It's got about 5,000. But you notice here, there was a spike in activity in here and here. The dark orange is paid, and the light orange is organic. Notice there were these part, these times where we paid some amount, usually it's $30, um, maybe like twice a month or so, depends. $30 once a month reaches a lot of people. And there's still an echo of that. It's kind of small comparatively. But there are still results organic even after the paid part. So it's not that you always have to pay. If you say, like, once a month at the beginning of the month, we're going to spend $25 to reach an audience, that'll snowball because uh, that'll create more activity for your page. The more you do it, of course, the more activity you'll get. But obviously here, a huge spike compared to the organic. And yes, it is very cynical to think, oh, what a coincidence. The more I pay, the more the audience I reach. Unfortunately, welcome to capitalism. <laughs> so if you are going to reach more people, you're going to pay more. But if it's within your budget, it's something you're you're accounting for. This latest, this this one latest week right here. Let me back up a little bit. So notice we started a, another campaign recently. Before starting the campaign, we were reaching, you know, 76, 95, 34 people. And then after you start to pay for it, suddenly you've reached 3,000 people, 4,000 people dies down a little bit, then it comes back up again as the campaign goes on. 9,000 people. This that, That's obviously not, not 9,000 new sales. But all of social media is a numbers game. The more you reach, the more audience you have. Take the 1%. Those are the most dedicated. We see some of these numbers here under insights and such, but I can also call up the owner and say, how is our campaign doing for that new product? And he can pull out the cash register and see that in cash terms. And it does work. You know, a few years ago with this client, he started to serve quail. Um, and uh, we were experimenting with this stuff, and we did a boosted post on quail. 
he called us up. We didn't tell him. We were just playing with it. He called us up. He said, hey, we're selling a lot of quail. What are you guys doing? And I said, we put a boosted post on Facebook because it works. And so that's the state of modern Facebook for businesses. It's very powerful, but it does require monetary investment. It can be affordable. You got 25 likes and you got 50 likes. Yeah, it's going to range. It's going to depend on your product and your brand and so many things. So it's a catch-22. I want more likes and such, and I have to pay for it. But you might not have be able to pay for it unless you get more likes. So... Um, Is that how I can use that to just get one like? <laughs> but it's pretty much saying that I need to Maybe, maybe just, just that offer. offer. Maybe it's only if I use the offer. Maybe just that offer, yes. So try to do a different kind of boost, not the offer. Maybe do a regular boost. And then also you can, uh, you can try to click that button to share your page and try to reach some of your so-called friends and see if you can get 25 of them to, to give you a like at least to get you to that point. Question. So unlike Google Plus, you can't manage um, your customers through this. Definitely. Manage your customers in what way? Well, like organize them and such? Google Plus, we were able to like send a particular ad to um, like a circle. A circle, yeah. It's the, not like that. The closest is using the boosted posts um, to reach a specific audience. Um, actually. There's also, over here in the settings, um, in the settings, you have to activate this. It's not as effective, but um, in the settings of the page, there was, right here, ability to narrow the potential audience for your newsfeed and limit visibility on your posts is turned off. <coughs> that one, if you turn it on, does then let you on a page by on a post by post basis sort of target your posts to more specific people, but not in this not in the level of Google Plus communities and circles and such. Okay. So notice I turn that on and now I got this little target, so I can target but narrow the potential reach. And here I can say these, these are the audience I'm trying to reach. Honestly, though, that's still not going to be as effective as boosting. I'm paying a little bit for it. So unfortunately, that's the big secret of Facebook. To reach more of an audience, you need to pay for it. So then the rumors were true. Facebook is going to start charging us to use it. Yes, if you're a business, but it is worth it. Yes, you just go back to settings okay. and then you turn on the option that says view, I'm sorry, that says new feed audience and visibility to post. Turn it on and then you'll get the little target. But boosting post is still more effective, I believe. So as we come to the end of the day, I'll take general questions in, in a moment, but thinking back, we've learned concepts, Google+, Twitter, Facebook. All three of them could still bleed into each other regarding what to post. You're still going to be thinking in terms of what's great for my audience, what's interesting for a potential audience, what will catch your attention, what will, what will entice them to click, what do I write. That still all applies to all the networks. Facebook needs that that leg up. Facebook needs that boost, literally, to, to reach more of an audience. And this is a whole big topic in and of itself, but I think I've shown enough for you to get started and to think about it and to look into the help system and all of that. Um, if you come back for a part two class, probably in a couple of months, we would talk about new networks. We would talk about LinkedIn and why it might be valuable for personal or business. We talk about uh, Instagram and why that's valuable in it as a very visual service. It's actually got more people using it than Twitter. Um, Instagram is half the age of Twitter 
and it's got 400 million users, whereas Twitter has about 300 million, 320 million. So, so Instagram is big. We would also cover YouTube. If you come this Friday, you'll get YouTube. And then depending on the year, I mean the, the time of the month and such, we might cover an extra network. So that's part two of the class. This Friday is the is the YouTube class if you'd like to come to it. What do you discuss about YouTube? Just the other on YouTube? Yeah. I'm gonna provide everyone a few testing videos and show everyone how to do a little bit of simple video editing. Adding text, adding sound, adding music to a video, okay. cutting it and such, and then uploading it to YouTube and optimizing it on YouTube so that it can get found. Okay. Any general questions about what we've learned in this course? Do I need to turn off the computer? I can turn it off, no problem. So as we wrap up the course, I'll mention uh, one more thing and then we'll end. Mm -hmm. I like to get feedback for my classes. If you'd like to give me feedback, you can do a search for rate my professor Victor Campos. And you'll get my profile at ratemyprofessors.com. That's a great website where you can look up instructors and see the opinions of students. Let's say you need to take an English class and there's seven to choose from, which, which is the one I want to take with the instructor with less homework, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, you look them up there. I have a profile there, two of them, because I teach at two colleges. If you're going to give me uh, some feedback for this class, which is optional and anonymous, uh, please do so at San Diego Continuing Education, not Southwestern College. This is not Southwestern College. So if you search rate my professor Victor Campos, my first result is me at San Diego Continuing Ed. If you see me at another one, Southwestern, well, hopefully you took a class of mine there. You want to rate me for San Diego Continuing Education. And uh, you can write anything you want. It's anonymous, uh, but it's very helpful to me because it helps me understand how well the classes are going and you can add comments and such. It's going to ask you the number of the class and this class number is 6530D, which is social one. And again, that's anonymous. It won't, uh, I won't know who wrote it. It won't affect your grade. Um, I would appreciate that. So, they can put bad comments, definitely, but I've only gotten yeah, one. I think it really. Most of the time, any negative comments that I see here, I don't want to blame the victim, but they're deserved because the instructor could be aloof or mean or spacey <laughs> or. Mean or too right much homework? It is. It is, but I think if do a good job as an instructor and you'll get good results. Do a good job as a business, you'll get good reviews. Make good food, you'll get good reviews. And there will always be mean, anonymous people, but I think the good people win out. For example, if you're missing it, you want to see something going somewhere, you see the bad review. I'm probably not going to buy it, you know, turn it That's off. a really good point. The thing about that, though, is you can't only rely on the bad reviews on Yelp. You have to get on Twitter and get followers there. And then when you get followers there, say, hey, don't forget to give me a Yelp review. So it's still up to you to get good reviews out of Twitter, out of Facebook, out of YouTube, to offset the bad ones. Thanks, Victor. Thank you. You posted some kind of new post on the Google is it possible that you can be moving at the door of that in the bad post? Somebody write it down for bad post or turn on throwing somebody easily? Usually no. Usually no. Yeah. You don't have the control to, wow. to do that on Yelp or any of these because then it's not honest, so to speak. If you're able to remove anyone's comment, then you're going to shape the message too much. And these companies don't want that. Just one moment. So everyone, thank you for coming, and I uh, hope to see you in a future class. Okay.